Hello, how are you all doing? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Shane Mubisha. Today, I want to talk about 13 signs that you might be undervaluing yourself. When we talk about undervaluing yourself, what does it mean? You know, sometimes people overvalue themselves. Let's say you are at level two, you overvalue yourself to level five. Undervalue is you're level two, you're acting as if you're zero or in level one. Like you don't believe in your own ability, you undervalue yourself. What are the signs to look out for to know you are doing this? Number one, you constantly apologize even when it's not necessary. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm doing this. Oh, because you think you've done something wrong. So you always apologize for nothing whatsoever. You are always apologizing. Oh, sorry. And even I heard someone say, like, when you are walking in a shop and want to get past somebody, you don't say sorry. Just say, excuse me. You just walk past. You Even when you're chatting with your friends, oh, I'm sorry. Or you're saying something and the person said, oh, that's not it. You just say, oh, I'm sorry. You often apologize. That's a sign that you are undervaluing yourself. Because let's say you've made a statement and you're apologizing for that statement. You are trying to say, I'm not what up to the level of the statement I just made. So you under, sometimes we do these things unconsciously, but we just have to be intentional with the way we carry ourselves. Number two, you hesitate to speak up or share your ideas, fearing they might not be good enough. You know, you just want somebody to hear you before you even start something. And somebody will say that it's better for you to keep some things to yourself until they start materializing. You're just looking for somebody to believe in your idea. Somebody to say, oh, yeah, it's nice before you embark on that idea. Let's say you're thinking, oh, I can start doing this. Oh, I can start selling this. Then you start telling everybody. And if somebody happens to say, oh, my God, what is that? Who's going to buy it from you? Then that idea is dead. That dream is dead. So you, you look for validation from people. Stop it. Number three, you settle for less than you deserve in relationships, jobs, or opportunities. You settle for less. Everybody should have their own values. What are your values? When you're dating somebody, when you're courting somebody, you should have your values that you look out for. It's not because you're picky. I'm not talking about have to be tall, have to be beautiful, have to have figure eight. No, that's not what I'm talking about. What are your values? Honesty. Can you communicate with the person? Can you trust this person? You know, what are the values that you're looking for? Or you just, anything goes. Even there is a certain job. I'm looking for a certain job. I want the job to be nine to five so that I can have time to develop my other, you know, dreams that I have in my mind. And then all of a sudden, because you've been searching for that for a while, then you happen to go and take um, a night shift. And when you take a night shift, you're sleeping throughout the day. You are working throughout the night. There is no time for you to develop your dreams. There is no time for you to kind of activate your ideas. You settle for less because you think it's taking a while for this thing to come. You know, why can't I just do this? Even in relationship, friendship or anything, you think you are lonely. So, and this person wants to be my friend, but this person don't have the values that I want in a friend. But you just flow with it because you think, mm, let me just settle, never settle for less. So those are the signs you know that you are undervaluing yourself. Stay where you are and let every other thing meet you up there. Don't go down to meet anything. Number four, you find it difficult to accept compliments and often downplay your achievements. When somebody says, oh, Shane, you look nice. Oh, me, really? Oh, your top look nice. Oh, yeah, I got it from pennies. Who asks you? Ejo, who asks you? Oh, you look great. Oh, thank you very much. Take it in. Oh, this project was good. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, this write-up is wonderful. Did you make this dish? Oh my goodness, it's delicious. Don't say, I didn't really do much. I just had salt and pepper. They didn't ask you. That's not what they asked you. They didn't ask for the ingredient. They say, you made a nice dish. Just take the compliment. You know, just take it. And don't downplay your achievement. Don't think because you wanted to, you know, be an MC, because you want to sweep the floor, and it's just nothing. It might be nothing to you. It might be a lot to some people. You know, because it's your strength and it's coming to you easily, doesn't mean that other people do that easily. So don't downplay your achievement and stop rejecting compliments. Those are signs that you are undervaluing yourself. Number five, you prioritize others' needs and preferences over your own, neglecting self-care. I think I've made a couple of videos about self-care. Even my last um, radio show that I shared live on Instagram on my page, Shion Obisheson underscore Youth Zone. 
I talked about the art of self-care. Self-care is so important. If you notice that even before somebody say, come, you are up and running. I'm not saying don't be there for people, but not at the expense of your own self-care. Let me tell you something. Come closer. When people come to you for something and you always give, when you can no longer give, they will go somewhere else. They will not go down with you because you no longer, you know, you can no longer give them. They will not go down with you. They will source for other things. So take care of you. When you observe that, like mothers, we are guilty in that regards with our children especially, but that is justifiable because you can walk your way around it. When your children start getting to an age that, you know, they'll begin to kind of take care of themselves, at least you can relax. But when you have people around you that are always sucking from you, taking from you, take, 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 and you don't have the time to take care of yourself, Pretend something bad happened. See how many people will come around. Number six, you have a habit of comparing yourself unfavorably to others. Stop comparing yourself. When you notice you are comparing yourself to other people, you are undervaluing yourself. I'm not saying don't aim, don't dream of something. But I think I made this example a couple of times. I said a, a lady from my church got this lovely car. It was brand new, very nice. It's a five-seater car. And if I start comparing myself to her, or if I start, oh, oh like, what is use? What can I use as a five-seater car for? Tell me. In my family, two adults, well, majority of them are adults now, five children, seven of us. We need a seven-seater at least, the minimum. What do I need a five-seater for? Why will you be comparing yourself, undervaluing yourself? God have put me in a limousine level. You know that I'm just seven-seater. They are very long. And I always say, I don't want a seven-seater. But yeah, I am. This is my life. So you are undervaluing yourself. It doesn't matter if the, what the person have is a material thing. Maybe they have a nice house. Maybe you have peace. You never know these things until you think internally. You, you kind of, you know, reflect on what you have received from God. So when you compare yourself, you are undervaluing yourself. You are thinking you should be in that position. What makes you think that person's position is better than yours? So think about that. Number seven, you downplay your skills and talent, attributing your successes to luck or external factors. You downplay your skills and talent. Let's say you have a good voice and then you started singing. That's the activation of your gift. You started singing and then, you know, somebody was playing the piano, the drummer was there and then you were singing and somebody like, you know, was saying, oh my goodness, her voice is so good. I, uh, it wasn't that much. It was the piano guy that's doing a lot of work. No, they all kind of, no, I know they all did something. Don't downplay your talent. Your talent might look like it's nothing to you. Maybe you have good listening skill. You might think, what is, what is so hard in listening? Oh, my brothers, my sisters, it's hard. For the people who, who don't have it, who are trying hard to have it, it's hard. Because it's your strength, it's your gift. It doesn't mean it comes to other people easily. Don't say it's, it's just nothing. No, don't downplay don't downplay at all. Don't downplay your skills and your talent. And you don't think, oh, it's luck that make it happen. Oh, it was because somebody. No, everything worked together. One body, different part. Your gift is your gift and embrace it. Never feel like you are inferior to somebody else or never think you are superior to other people as well. So your gift and your talent, never think they are little or nothing. That is why people hide it. They think it's not going to benefit anybody. Look at the story of a lady who lost her husband in Nigeria and that she started helping other widows who are going through the same pain that she was going through. So you might think, what will I be saying to them? Will I say, come and laugh? You shouldn't be laughing. No, life goes on. Something bad happened to you. Of course we know, but life goes on. She's helping other people. She takes widows on dates. She takes care of them. She takes them shopping. She's helping them because somebody that, that's in the same shoe, you will understand, you'll connect with them more than somebody who didn't lose the husband? What are you going to offer? You're just reading from a book. You, you, you're not expressing the pain. But here is somebody that is expressing our pain to other people and they can relate because they're wearing the, the same shoe, maybe different sizes, of course. But don't think any gift or your talent is small or too little or it's unimportant. No, that means you're undervaluing yourself. Number eight, you avoid taking risks or pursuing ambitious goals due to fear of failure or rejection. Never be comfortable in, in your spot. You know that comfort zone kind of growth. You don't like to, well, I might feel guilty a bit with what I'm saying, but doing the radio show, I've kind of like, wow, 27 weeks, 
it's over 30 weeks have started actually but we missed some weeks so we are going in this week with 27 26 episodes that's 26 weeks radio have never like even coming on youtube I've, look at me from when i was young like you will never even someone talking to me is hard to even open my mouth and respond not to talk of a camera in my face you understand what i'm saying so don't don't be comfortable in your comfort zone you don't like taking risks. You don't like doing anything. Oh, you have a good voice. There's an audition happening. You should go. Somebody say, oh, yeah, let's go. Maybe you don't even know it's happening. Somebody say, let's go. Eh, I'm scared. Eh, people will not eat you. They will not chop you. You are not noodles. You are not ice cream. They will look at you and love you. Just, you know, when you're on the stage, everybody always gets straight fights. There's always a way for you to kind of navigate your own. Look at somebody. Make eye contact with that person. Just focus on one person. If you can focus on one person, you'll be fine. And breathe in and out. And pretend those strange faces are the faces that you know. And even some people, they are not even strange faces. They are faces that they know already. But still, they'll be like, you know, just go for it. Don't be, if, you, if somebody think, oh, this thing that you have, you can kind of channel this area. Don't say, no, I'm okay here. Yeah. No, don't be comfortable where you are. Don't avoid taking risks. That's, that's the sign that you are undervaluing yourself. because. To educate yourself, we should learn every day. The day we stop learning is the day we die. So never stop learning. And you will continue to learn in the area that's of interest to you. So you pursue ambitious goals. You want to do something. You have a good voice. You activate it. You start singing. Uh, as time goes on, you start writing your lyrics. As time goes on, you start even over... What is the, what is the word you use? Like proof reading, where you write... Proof reading for other people. Somebody will write a song and come to you to look at it. Ah, what do you think? You know, you keep going. Don't be comfortable in one spot. Oh my goodness, the sky is so wide for every bird to fly. So don't be in one space. Number nine, you have a habit of seeking validation from others to feel worthy of competence. I mentioned that validation earlier on. You always have to, somebody has to say, oh, it's nice before you feel like, oh, I did a good job. Well, sometimes you have to have people like the way they say accountability partner. Oh, I want to start doing exercise. I want somebody to be on my neck to say, have you done it today? Have you done it? You know, how many steps do you take and all like that? But you, you cannot be looking for validation from everybody until somebody now says it's okay. What if they say it's not okay? And what's the point in looking for validation anyway? That is why some people say unnecessary things that you don't ask them. Each time you gather to talk, they'll be talking about fronting material things. Because there is no, there is, uh, they don't have confidence. There is low self-esteem there. So they are looking for people to hail their ego, to boost them up. That's what it, you are undervaluing yourself when you're looking for validation from people. And let me tell you something. Your gifts are from God to you. You activate it into a talent and that will take you into your purpose. You want, you, you, your gift will channel you right into the purpose of God upon your life. So if God is calling you into purpose, why are you asking man for validation are you kidding me somebody sent you an errand you are asking somebody else if you should run the errand if you think the errand is okay to run go back to the one who has called you and say i did this today this is did it. you know that's why when you're doing something you put all your best into it this is my best expand me let me do more better than this i want to do more for you than what i have done you know increase me spiritually so that the manifestation of the increase in the spirit will begin to show forth you know physically so don't be looking for validation from people. What validation will you get from man based on their own knowledge? Somebody cannot advise you more than what they know. And you're comparing man's knowledge to God? Mm -mm. Number 10, you tolerate disrespectful behavior or mistreatment from others without standing up for yourself. You allow yourself to be a dustbin. People just do anyhow, say anyhow to you, behave to you anyhow. No, you should be able to stand up to say, Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, sir. I don't like that. That hurts my feelings. It doesn't matter if the person receives it or not. Nicely say it. Control your anger. Say it. It's the anger that is the issue. And no matter even how calm that you are to some people, they will still will not want to be corrected. They will still will not want to be received. But it is up to you to, to be able to express yourself, to say, I'm not okay with this. So that's why when I mentioned that, what are your values? What do you look out for? What would like it's not about looking for a particular shape or physique or structure in a person what are the things you look out for in a friend what are the things you look out for in the people that surround you so when you begin to see that their behavior is not in line with what you stand for you can easily say no don't do that and they will know you for 
But you understand, some people, they like wearing black. I wear black. But there are some people who don't like it. So if you're a friend with somebody and they say, I want to do my birthday, but you know they don't like, you know, wearing black, you respect them. They don't like black. You respect them and wear other colors. You don't say, black is my color. I like it like that. And then you go there. You'll be upsetting somebody that is celebrating. If you don't want to be there, don't go. You understand? These are the type of respect that you give to people. Don't, don't allow people to disrespect you anyhow. Because when you permit it, the day you will stand up to say no, they'll be wondering what, like if you're saying yes to a child all the time, the day you will say no, the child will be wondering what, what's no? What happened today? Oh, my mom hates me. No. One disrespect is enough. That's the sign that you are undervaluing yourself. There are other people to be with than be with people who will put you down. 11 points. You feel guilty of setting your boundaries or saying no to others' requests. Some of you, when somebody say, can you do this for me? It's not convenient. You cannot say no. You will go and then you'll be murmuring and be complaining. It is better not to do something than complain after doing it. Then it doesn't make sense. Because uh, God love a cheerful giver. You don't give with, uh, with uh, grumbling or murmuring. And giving in regards to doesn't have to be money only. Can you run an errand for me? If you can't, you say no. If somebody say, can you do this for me? Say no. Don't be saying, she's just asking me to do something. No, 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 no. You'll be, you'll be talking to somebody else, another person. You cannot stand up to, to the person to say, no, I can't do that. I'm sorry. It's not convenient. I'm sorry. Next time, I can do it. But at the moment, it's not convenient. Why can't you say that? You know? Why can't you say that to people so that they would know where you stand? So they would know that in regards to a particular thing, this person cannot do it. It's like if you don't drink alcohol and somebody sends you to go and buy alcohol, if you are not convenient with doing that, say, I don't. I don't want to buy that. I don't want to do that for you. I can't. Because I don't want, you know, if you have other things you want me to pick up for you from the shop, yeah. But I don't want to do this. Be able to stand up and say no. And they will know that for you. That is respect. That's boundaries. Setting your boundaries straight. I don't like that. You know, don't bring that on board. And that applies to everybody. Number 12, you underestimate the value of your time, skills, and contributions. Your time is very important. Your time is your life. Don't allow people to waste your time. If you receive a call and the call is not valuable, know how to say, I'm a bit busy. Can I call you back? Don't allow people to be wasting your time. The sun is shining. We know. I can see. You doesn't have to go into an hour discussion. Value your time. Value your skills. Like some people, they will have gift and talent. Other people will be coming to them to ask for that gift for free. But if you say no to them, they will go to other places and pay for the same thing they are asking you for. Never undervalue your skills. Never undervalue yourself. Your time. Your time is very important. Your time should bring value to you. When value goes out, value comes back in. So when you give somebody your time because you're listening to them, are you getting value from what they are saying? Will they receive value from you? If somebody is in the habit of wasting your time, they wouldn't mind you wasting their time as well. So when you are working on a path that doesn't make sense, they will not be able to say, I don't have time for this. Can I call you back? You should be able to say, no, my time is my property. What you are saying it is not really going flowing with me. Can we talk about this another time? Value your time. Value your abilities, you know, your contributions, what you contribute towards something. Value it so that your life will not just be money from money to night. You're just busy doing a lot of things, but you do not achieve anything. So my final point on this note, you struggle to set and achieve goals because you doubt your abilities or worthiness. Doubt is a silent killer. It kills dreams. Do not doubt yourself. Other people are doubting you. You yourself, will you also doubt yourself? If somebody is saying, Shell, you can do it, a word of encouragement is good enough. But if I say, Shell, I can do it, it feels different than somebody encouraging you. Shell, I can do it, is affirming what I can do by myself because I've been gifted to do it. Somebody saying, Shell, you can do it, it's just chorus. It's up to you to get up and get it done. So never doubt your abilities, never doubt who you are, never doubt who you are becoming. You don't get perfect by the day. People looking for perfection are the people who don't do anything. So you expect that, oh, you become the best, oh, the, the international global speaker because you started doing public speaking the day you started. No, it's not going to happen. If you look back on the videos, like my first video I posted on YouTube, I look like I wanted to faint. Like, what is this? I look so pale, like I will faint. But look at it now. It's not perfect, but it's getting better. So never doubt what you carry. 
Because if you doubt, people are doubting you anyway. So it's like you say, oh, what you said is true. I cannot do this. I will not be able to achieve it. So never doubt. So with this 13 point, when you have traces of this, it doesn't necessarily mean you are undervaluing yourself, but pay attention to this so that you will not be, God will not set you at a level 10 and you are putting yourself at a level 5 thinking you are not worthy of, you know, who you are as a person. So if this, if you have received value from this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, can you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. Until I come to your screen again, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, warriors.